It is with great joy to praise the Lord Jesus Christ today. He is the Son of the Living God, and He is my personal Savior and my Redeemer, as well as a personal friend who knows all my needs and who knows all those who believes and who loves Him and keep His commandments. I would like to welcome you all to our broadcast today. Uh, in our time to read the Holy Word of God. And I praise the Lord that there are a uh, few of you who have, uh, who have been following our Bible reading from the book of Acts of the Apostles. I would like to begin reading in, verse, uh, in chapter 22 from the King James Version Bible. This is a continuation of our reading and study yesterday. So I would like to praise and and give glory and thank the Lord Jesus Christ uh, for allowing us to uh, fellowship and to know him better each day praise be to God the Father the one true God and to the Holy Ghost that is the omnipresence of the Spirit of God verse number one of chapter 22 from the King James Version Bible Paul is speaking here. Men, brethren, and fathers, hear ye my defense, which I make now unto you. Verse number 2. And when they heard that he spake in the Hebrew tongue to them, they kept the more silence, and he saith. Verse number 3. I am verily a man which am a Jew, born in Tharsus, a city in Cilicia, yet brought up in this city at the feet of Gamaliel, and taught according to the perfect manner of the law of the fathers, and was zealous toward God, as ye are all are this today. I would like to pause for a while and absorb what Paul introduced as his personal testimony and also his personal defense against the accusations of his fellow Jews that he was in contrary to the customs and to the law. He broke the uh, mosaic, uh, uh, mosaic uh, tradition and customs because the Jewish people have a high respect and regard for uh, Moses, the greatest, one of the greatest prophets of God in the Old Testament. So he debunked the misinformation and debunked the misrepresentation of his character. We have studied that yesterday in my previous video, and I would like us to consider that Paul was establishing here his honest, credible, and factual statements. His defense is from his um, background, talking to them who he was and how he came to be, that he is, from his opening statements, refuting those that are accusing him with lies. You know, friends, just like in the times of Paul, we are also, in our present culture, and in our present society, in our present time, there are lies that are going on right now that if we are not like Berean Christians, meaning to say we are not examining the scriptures for ourselves, we will just hear from false teachers of the law and from false uh, gospel uh, teachers, we will be deceived. We will live a life of illusion. And we will be deluded because lies that are constantly heard becomes the norm and eventually becomes the truth. So Paul establishes here his personal factual testimony about himself. And those in the crowd, I would imagine, knows what he was talking about. So friends, today, as we are living in this global global system 
we need to be like the Berean Christians, as I have read previously in the book of Acts. We need to examine and uh, investigate, and I would say protest, meaning to say to prove and test before we take some uh, actions or before we take some I'm talking here about peaceful actions, not those that are rioting and burning and, and looting and, and deceiving others and are hiding, um, the, uh, hiding from legitimate uh, grievances that people would like to express when they protest. What I'm talking about pro when I talk about protest, I mean diligently searching the Holy Scriptures to test whether the government is saying the truth or whether the uh, big pharmaceuticals company are speaking the truth and also whether the entertainment world and the and the uh, culture of our world is speaking the truth according to the scriptures you might be asking it's so f it's so difficult for us to know what the uh, the government the 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 pharmaceuticals company the financial institutions are up to but we know uh, from the clue and hint of the Bible that we as Christians we are not against these uh, ordinary things that we are seeing as part of our normal uh, system in our global community no we are against the wickedness of men and women who serve the enemy of God, the Antichrist himself. These are what we are battling for. That's why we need to be like the Berean Christians. And so today, I'm, I'm just making an appeal to all of you friends to pause for a moment and filter all that you have been watching and that you have been believing as facts or truth. They may not be because the Bible is very clear that there is an enemy of God himself who would like to deceive even the very, very elect. So we, we, are, uh, we are encouraged, admonished to search deeply and to just ask the Lord Jesus Christ for guidance in this world of deception and delusion. So this is what I would like to share with you out of the insight from what Paul was saying. Seldom or very rare nowadays, people are telling the truth. Most majority, if not all, are, are trained to lie, are, are, are taught to lie by universities and colleges and institutions. Some of them uh, are, are just able to, to make their way to disregard the principles of the Holy Scripture. What am I saying here, friends? If it is not from the law or to the or from the testimony, it is because there is no truth or light in them. Therefore, friends, what we are seeing right now, what we are hearing right now, what we are feeling right now in our world is exactly the deception that the enemy of God had been sowing to sow fear to show um, distraction and stress among the population of the world today. And I praise the Lord that there are few who have not bowed down themselves to this world and they have searched the scriptures. And I hope you will continue to be faithful in searching the scriptures. So Paul is just refuting the lies of his fellow Jews against him so that they will discredit him so that his work will be demolished and diminished and perhaps destroyed but the good lord gave him his uh, good lord gave him the words to speak so that he will be able to defend himself and to provide a perfect powerful tes personal testimony verse number 4 paul is continuing his defense and I read, and I persecuted this way unto the death, meaning to say the Christian. He was he he confessed that he was persecuting the Christians or those that are following the way. Jesus said, He is the way, the truth, and the life. No one goes to the Father except through him. No one cometh to the Father except through Jesus Christ. So Paul 
before he became Paul, he was Saul, the persecutor, and uh, he persecuted the Christian. That's why it was incumbent upon him to embrace a new legal name because he wanted to not only symbolically, not only um, legally change his name or his life, but he wanted to show to the world that Christ had uh, had converted his heart, that he is no longer the old person that he was used to be a murderer, uh, a blasphemer of Jesus Christ. Now he is a preacher of righteousness and he is a loyal servant of Jesus Christ. So Paul testified that he was a, uh, a Jew uh, born in Tarsus and he was educated uh, by the well-known Gamaliel and he was able to, to um, perform and to keep the law of the Jews and also he was zealous toward God and even in verse number four he continues to say and I persecuted this way meaning to say the followers of Jesus unto the death binding delivering into prisons both men and women and that's the truth friends Paul was indeed the ringleader of those who destroy and uh, kill the Christians who follow Jesus Christ. Verse number 5. As also the high priest doth bear me witness, and all the estate of the elders, and from whom also I received letters unto the brethren, and went to Damascus to bring them which were there bound unto Jerusalem for to be punished. Verse number 6. And it came to pass that as I made my journey and was come nigh unto Damascus about noon, suddenly there shone from heaven a great light round about me. Verse number 7. And I fell unto the ground and heard a voice saying unto me, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And I answered, Who art thou, Lord? And he said unto me, I am Jesus of Nazareth whom thou persecutest. God, through Jesus Christ the Son, has to show himself personally to Paul to convey to him the message that he was chosen to be the preacher of righteousness and a missionary par excellence, self-supporting, independent, to be the missionary to the Gentile world. And so he had this moment, the Damascus moment, wherein he was given this glorious appearing of the character of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so he, he shared that to the Jews, and he shared that uh, to those who would like to destroy his work and to uh, persecute him personally. Verse number 9. And they that were with me saw indeed the light and were not afraid, but they heard not the voice of him that spake to me. This is a parallel uh, experience which Luke had written when he, in the earlier chapters of the book of Acts, when he described how Paul was converted. So he was just giving this powerful testimony truthfully to those who are uh, to, to those who are there listening to him intently the, the advantage of Paul is the fact that he was able to speak in Hebrew he was able to speak in their own tongue this was the gift of Paul he may not be the the excellent speaker the charismatic speaker that we will that that we admire that we will f flock to hear but Paul has been diligent in his uh, studies, so he is able to master some languages, which gives him credibility and gives him the, the uh, truthfulness of what he is saying. Verse number 10. And I said, What shall I do, Lord? 
And the Lord said unto me, Arise, go into Damascus, and there it shall be told thee of all things which are appointed for thee to do. So Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, who is at the right hand of God, spoke through the Holy Ghost power, the omnipresence of God, and, and the comforter that Jesus Christ sent to His disciples spoke to him that he was to do his bidding and that he was given this call. Friends, when God calls people, he knows that he can use that person for his work. And so Paul was willing to listen to the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul was willing to do God's work because he personally saw the glory, the majesty, and the presence of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Verse number 11, And when I could not see for the glory of that light, being led by the hand of them that were with me, I came into Damascus. And one Ananias, a devout man according to the law, having a good report of all the Jews which dwelt there, came unto me and stood and said unto me, Brother Saul, receive thy sight. And the same hour I looked up upon him. Verse number 14. And he said, The God of our fathers hath chosen thee, that thou shouldest know his will, and see that just one, meaning to say Jesus Christ, and shouldest hear the voice of his mouth. Verse number 15. For thou shalt be his witness unto all men of what thou hast seen and heard. Verse number 16. Paul is continuing his testimony. And now, why tarriest thou? Arise and be baptized, and wash away thy sins, calling on the Lord, calling on the name of the Lord. So Paul had this baptismal experience to as a symbol that his sins had been washed away by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ verse number 17 and it came to pass that when I was come again to Jerusalem even while I prayed in the temple I was in a trance just like Peter in Acts chapter 9 the, the Lord Jesus Christ gave vision to Peter to go to the Gentiles to go to accept the, the 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 calling of Cornelius, a gentle, a gentile military man, to minister, to give the message, to preach the message, and now Paul testified that he was praying in the temple, and the Lord was giving him this the vision, verse eighteen, and saw him saying unto me the Lord's words, which Paul quoted. As his defense, make haste and get thee quickly out of Jerusalem, for they will not receive thy testimony concerning me. So he said this in the hearing of those Jews that would like to kill him. Verse number 19. And I said, Lord, they know that I imprisoned and beat in every synagogue them that believeth on thee. And when the blood of thy martyr Stephen was shed, I also was standing by and consenting unto his death. He was an accomplished. And, and kept the raiment of them that slew him. Meaning to say he was, he was uh, an accomplice to the crime uh, by taking care of those of the of the clothes meaning to say he was cheering those people who were stoning the martyr Stephen verse 21 and he said to me depart for I will send thee far hence unto the Gentiles so this was the mission of Paul Paul was to be a missionary a messenger of Jesus Christ to the Gentile world Verse 22, And they gave him audience unto this word, and then lifted up their voices, and said, Away with such a fellow from the earth, for it is not fit that he should live. I'd like to just pause for a moment and observe what the people have reacted according to the sacred scriptures, according to the narration of Dr. Luke about what happened. 
Paul was giving his defense. Paul was reflecting on his powerful personal testimony about how Jesus Christ met him on the road to Damascus. He gave his credentials. He gave his character away. He gave his, uh, he gave his chosen um, experiences to the people. But in spite of all this, the people were so adamant. The people were so decisive in, in trying to slaughter, or I should say, in trying to kill Paul. You know, friends, there are only two forces right now in this world that are fighting for our minds and for our hearts. The forces of the good and the forces of evil. The forces that are with Christ Jesus and the forces of evil. The Christ, the true Christ, and the Antichrist. Deception versus truth. This is exactly where we are today in our sphere, in our space, and even in our situations, friends. It is very clear. The devil is not hiding somewhere. He is not hiding. He is being seen in plain sight. He uses uh, powerful institutions in the world, the government, the financial institutions, the entertainment, the culture to sweep the minds of majority of people to go against the Word of God and Jesus Christ Himself. This is, these are the Antichrist and this is the spiritual warfare we are all engaged in just like Paul. His life is at stake but he courageously stood firm on the side of Jesus Christ. Let me ask you this question. Which side are you on today? I hope and pray, friends, that you are on the side of Jesus Christ. Verse 23, And as they cried out and cast off their clothes and threw dust into the air, meaning to say the mob, the, the mob becomes un, unruly and uproar and they try to riot and they try to um, make an ugly, ugly scene so that the authorities will will murder Paul in their presence. Verse 24, The chief captain commanded him to be brought into the castle and bade that he should be examined by scourging, meaning to say, in order to appease the mob and the crowd and the unruly people, thrown multitudes of people that are against Paul, they scourged him into confession that he might know wherefore they cried so against him. Verse 25, And as they bound him with thongs, Paul said unto the centurion that stood by, Is it lawful for you to scourge a man that is a Roman and uncondemned? He uses his uh, legal knowledge to defend himself, his rights. Verse number 26, When the centurion heard that he went and told the chief that he went and told the chief captain, saying, Take heed what thou doest, for this man is a Roman. Verse 27, that the chief captain came and said unto him, Tell me, art thou a Roman? He said, Yea. And the chief captain answered with great sum, Obtained I this freedom. And Paul said, But I was free born. Because Paul was a privileged citizen of Rome. Because by virtue of his education, by virtue of his influence, he was born free. He was not like that chief captain who paid a, a huge amount of money to obtain his freedom. Verse 29, Then straightway they departed from him, which should have examined him. And the chief captain also was afraid after he knew that he was a Roman and because he had bound him. Verse 30, And the last from chapter 22 on the morrow because he would have known the certainty wherefore he was accused of the Jews he loosed him from his bonds bands and commanded the chief priests and all their counsel to appear and brought Pete, Paul down and set him before them and of that verse 
of Acts chapter 22. What is the takeaway, friends, from Paul's defense and his powerful personal testimony against the unruly mob, against those who accused him, against who, against who would like to who would like to see him dead? Paul stood courageous. He knew who he was. He knew that his time has not yet come, but his time will come that he will be a martyr like Stephen, that he used, that he long or long, long ago, he was one of those who cheered and consented for the murder of Deacon Stephen. What's the takeaway? Friends, if God calls you and me today to do his work, are we willing to die for His cause? Are we willing to stand courageous no matter what the mob, no matter what the uproar will be? And are we able to confidently defend ourselves and the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? That is the takeaway for today. His Courage is an in inspiration for me to continue my independent, self-supporting ministry. I only depend on God through His Son, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. So today, friends, we're living in this world full of deception, illusion, and deluded people. The mobs are against those people who truly keep the commandments of the Lord and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So today I would like to make an appeal to all of those who are called by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to stand firm, to be courageous, and to continue studying the Word of God to put the Word of God into our hearts and to our minds, that when we will appear among the torturers, that among those who will torture us and will persecute us and will destroy and kill us, we are going to be, we are able to say to them that we believe in the true Messiah, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Friends, very soon the Lord will come. Very soon this world will be judged. It is overdue for the wrath of God because of the evil, wicked, full of lies and iniquities that are happening in our world today. The world is past due for the judgment and vengeance of God. So today, friends, vengeance is not ours. It is God's and we will wait and we will be patient and we will endure until He comes, until the judgment will be poured out so that the character and the glory of Jesus Christ will be vindicated and all those who are saved will praise God and will sing hallelujah to Him and glorify His name forever and ever. Amen and Amen. May God continue to bless you and keep you till we meet again.